Hello and welcome once again to the darkened room of music conversation. I'm Chris. And I'm Darren. Today we're going to talk about music's role in movies. Going all the way back to Elvis and talking about the history throughout the years. Yeah. How music has played such an important role in the movie industry. And then we're going to later talk about the movies that we think are our, our favorites. Yeah. You know, music-centric movies, and these are the rules. It's, it can't be a musical. Okay. Um, it can't be um, like a, a, a biopic. Okay. So like, you know, the Freddie Mercury, uh, yeah. Bohemian Rhapsody, that's that's disqualified. Gotcha. This is where music plays an important role in the progression of the plot. And if the music's gone, there's no movie. I like it. Yeah. So going all the way back to 1956, when Elvis uh, starred in his first motion picture, Love Me Tender, mm -hmm. this has been something that ha has happened. The marriage between a pop singer and... And movies, even if they couldn't act. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Uh, I mean, Elvis, you know, you could, it's debatable whether or not he could actually act. Remember, Eddie Murphy made jokes about that in yes. the 80s. Mm -hmm. Lemonade. <laughs> Which, yeah. <laughs> could just sing his line. Show up and yep. sing your line. So after Elvis made a string of movies, then, of course, uh, not long after that, the Beatles in the 60s, you mm -hmm. know, of course, had a Hard Day's Night and Help. Um, and then all the way into the 70s, you know, Superfly was a big uh, mm -hmm. big movie yeah. that in incorporated music. Um, the Wiz in the late 70s, mm -hmm. which I thought that was a not-so-great movie, but, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. That's my opinion. Uh, Sergeant Pepper's uh, Lonely Hearts Club Band. I don't know if you remember that one with the Bee Gees. I do, yeah. yeah. yeah so, Peter Frampton was in that as P well. Peter yep. Frampton, exactly mm -hmm. right. Yep. So so a lot of these things were, were just throughout the whole history of popular music. Um, you've had that marriage between current pop stars and and movies all the way you know up till now you know a star is born lady gaga yeah you know yeah. so so this has been going on for a while so uh having said that knowing that the history it's always kind of been this way uh, movies and the big screen like popular music guys and girls uh we're gonna name our top five most music centric movies mm -hmm. and we'll just go back and forth and i have a feeling some of these will probably be the same but they may be but we'll, yeah we'll see what happens there may be some prizes too so there could you be never some know. surprises all right yeah. well you kick us off okay so my number five is actually the blues brothers i think it's a comedy <laughs> classic it makes me giggle every time yeah. i watch it but man talk about a music centric movie for sure. Like yep. if you love the blues, you're gonna love this movie because it's got James Brown, Cab Calloway, Aretha Franklin's in it, uh, Ray Charles, uh, John Lee Hooker, and Shaka Khan even makes an appearance in Wonderful. it. Wonderful, yeah. Wonderful. So yeah, it was excellent, excellent movie. Of course, you know the Blues Brothers was originally a Saturday Night Live skit. Yeah. And uh, if you've never watched it, if you're a little young on the young side, and maybe have never checked it out. Check it out. It's a classic. You can't just live the rest of your life without seeing it. I totally agree. Yeah. That is an excellent choice. And I'm going to go with my number five. A little bit, a little cheesy here. I okay, understand. that's fine. That's fine. Uh, Urban Cowboy. <laughs> really? <laughs> Starring John Travolta. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, when I think uh, of this topic, that was honestly the first movie that popped into my head. Really? Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the, I mean, there's music constantly through yeah. that movie. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And, so. and it, you know, it's the good kind of country, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Looking for Love, Johnny mm -hmm. Lee. You know, they got a lot of mileage out of it. Stand By Me, Mickey Gilly. Mm -hmm. Those songs yeah. hit the pop charts. There was an even a country-flavored uh Eagle song on there. Yeah. With lying eyes. That, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. So that's my number five, Urban Cowboy. Very cool. <laughs> All right. So my number four is yet another comedy classic. This All one right. came out in 1984. Mm -hmm. uh, starred Christopher Guest, Michael McKean, and Harry Shearer. <laughs> yes, this is Spinal Tap. <laughs> now, I knew you were going to have that on there. Yeah. So, so sometimes I'll admit, I'll steer away from some things because I just want our list to be a little bit different. <laughs> okay. But, but yeah. The I truth thought, comes out now. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought of that one for sure and that's yeah. that's a great choice i love the movie yeah uh, uh, we'll never get tired of that one some of the some of the things in it though have gone on to become music icons like yeah. the you know catchphrases that you hear all the time <laughs> um the, this one goes to 11 yeah you know where he's uh showing the amp and he's got numbers on it that goes to 11 thinking it's going to be louder hello cleveland yeah <laughs> hello cleveland yeah that's another one and they also inspired Maybe a little bit uh, Metallica album with the Black album. I uh, would say you're right about <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, at least people made comparison to it. I don't know. I right. Don't think that was on purpose necessarily, no. but it was definitely um, you the, know the first time it was the original Black album. It was the original Black album, yes. right? So yeah, that's my number four. All right, my number four is a movie. I will say up front, it's not like 
a movie that's that important to me. Mm. But um, we're talking about history here, so I yeah. gotta say, I gotta include this one: Dirty Dancing. I mean, it is. You cannot separate that movie from the music that's in that movie. It's just impossible to do. I have no comment. <laughs> I, I said up front. I, yeah. I'm just talking about historical purposes. Okay. I, I, I think it, it deserves to be on this list. It's, okay. it's a movie that I saw but way back in the 80s when it was out. Mm-hmm. I have never watched it. You can swear me under oath. I have not watched it since that time. I do remember it, though, oddly enough. Sure, yeah. Uh, yeah. So The music in it was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, and it introduced a lot of people like uh, in their teens, like in the '80s, yeah. to that old '50s and '60s music that this was actually true. really good. Yeah, Th- so this it is did true. do that. I I, I got to admit, give credit where credit's due. It yeah. did that much for the music. It also made a lot of young women want to be strippers. But anyway, yes, it did. Uh, <laughs> moving right along, <laughs> um, take the good with the bad, I guess. Yeah, um, and, and you decide which is good and which is bad. <laughs> All right, number three number on your three list. for me. Um, now. My next are actually from the year 2000. For some reason, the year 2000 was like one of the greatest eras of movie making ever, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but this one is a semi-autobiographical, so it's basically a fictional story based on a true story, uh, which typically would disqualify it from this list. But since it's fictional and based, I went ahead and added it in. Almost okay. Famous. Yeah. The, the Cameron Crowe story. Um it's a great look into the rock scene. It the really 1970s, is. Early 70s, early 70s. And especially. done so well. Yeah. I mean, I, I can watch that movie anytime and enjoy it. Absolutely. I thought it was a great movie. And yeah. my favorite scene, of course, the most touching scene, I think, was the scene on the bus with Tiny Dancer. And they all start <laughs> I agree. singing along. Yeah. And that, by the way, you know how much of a huge fan of Elton John I am. That's my favorite Elton John song. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a great song. I listened yeah. to it earlier today. That's a nice. true story. Yeah, there you go. All, all right. right. Up next for me. And this is one of my favorite movies ever, and I hope that this qualifies. I really do. Okay. Um, High Fidelity. Oh, it qualifies. <laughs> it qualifies. Uh, is it, are we going to talk about that a We're little gonna later? We're going to talk about it again later, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling, but I, yeah. could, I could not leave that off. No, always. you can't. You can't leave it off. No. Right. So yeah. that that would be my uh, number three. Okay. So, so we'll talk about that we'll more talk in a minute. We'll talk about it later. Yeah. Uh, so my number two, also from 2000, starring Christian Bale, American Psycho. Wow, I love. I didn't this even consider movie. that, but that is a, that's a great choice, yeah. man. Yeah, I mean, you got you know Genesis. a serial killer, yeah, and basically before he murders people, he talks about music, music. from the 80s, from the 80s, that he and really yeah, and uh, how can you deny an axe murder to the soundtrack of hip to be square i mean <laughs> <laughs> remember when they delete you're, you're bringing back memories yeah. now. they deleted i was hoping that we'd bring song. this up yeah 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 the soundtrack originally had the huey lewis song but apparently they didn't get the the right and i don't know how how does that happen somehow yeah. the it, it wasn't signed off on properly or something mm-hmm. so huey yeah. lewis didn't want it on there so they yeah. had to take it off so huey yeah. lewis always causing problems um <laughs> that and ghostbusters so, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah for sure all right so uh what are we ready for number uh you're at your number Number two. Number two, mm-hmm. I'm going to go with Purple Rain by Prince. Ah, very nice. I thought of that one. Yeah. Um, I, I love the music, of course. Fantastic album. Probably in my top ten favorite albums of all time. Right. You know, at least close to it. But, um, yeah, I didn't like the movie that much. Yeah, well, I feel like with the, I did like the movie. Yeah. Um, and, and there's so many iconic scenes in there that yeah. are music related. Just like, like when the time does Jungle Love. I mean, come Absolutely, on. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, yeah. I will never forget that. I, mm-hmm. And, um, when he's riding around on the motorcycle to when doves cry. Yeah. You know, all of these scenes just go popping through my head. And I haven't seen that movie probably in 15 years. They are iconic. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So I couldn't leave it off my list. So Yeah. One of my favorite moments is when the time was walking by his uh, dressing room and mocking him for Let's Go Crazy. Yeah. They were like, Let's Go Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I understand. I, it, it's so weird. I, I remember these things now because I was we were pretty young when that movie came out. Yeah. And I remember watching uh, those Siskel and Ebert bombs and when they were they were uh, rating the movie one of them really liked it and one of them really hated it yeah and uh and it was just kind of funny i just always remembered that like yeah. one of them was and i don't know which was which i didn't really mm-hmm. watch them that much i just remember yeah. one of them going i couldn't disagree more <laughs> After, <laughs> you know it was just one of those things i remember yeah. so purple rain is my number two very cool all right well number one let's talk about high fidelity <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about that it. is absolutely my favorite music-centric movie yeah uh saw it in the theater yeah um 
John Cusack. Oh my God, some of his his monologue stuff, you know, about making the perfect mixtape. Yeah, like, that really spoke to me. Um, the story itself was really good. The story was not bad. And, yeah, and we worked in in music retail, secondhand music retail. Uh, and has there ever been a movie that nailed that any better than that movie? Uh, no, right? No, I mean that it, is anybody who's worked in no. a secondhand record store. They get this movie. We never treated our customers that bad. No, 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 no. Never. But I thought a lot of those things. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and to see Jack Black mocking the guy for I just called to say, say I, I love, love you. you. Yeah, was a you know, classic moment. One of those things like oh, I wish I could have said. That. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I agree. And then I of agree. course he follows that. I've got the quote here. <laughs> uh, he follows that. He turns to his coworker and says, uh, "Top five <laughs> musical crimes perpetrated by Stevie Wonder in the '80s and '90s." Sub question: Is it in fact unfair to criticize a formerly great artist there we go. for his latter day sins? <laughs> is it better to burn out or, or fade, fade away? away? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> brilliant. So many great quotes in here. Peter Effing Frampton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and of course all their top five lists. And uh, you know, I think right. the top five list that they did in this movie is kind of part of the inspiration for what we're doing. I was going to say, without that movie, would we be sitting here? We right would now? not be here. No, <laughs> not at all. Yeah, and I thought. Lisa Bonet was just adorable. She was fantastic. And yeah. in that, and I loved her character. Yep. And the scene where her and John Cusack are saying goodbye, and he's like, "Where are you going?" And she's like, "I'm going that way." And he's like, "I'm going that way." <laughs> the <laughs> yeah. officer like, "Just brilliant. So yes. good. So yep. good. Yep. Um, <clears throat> probably should be number one. Pro- for me, as far as what I like, it probably is my number one. Okay." But I've got one that I got to pick that I think is a little bit more important on the musical okay. scale. So you were doing a more historical <laughs> list where I was doing my favorites. Yeah. So and, that, and that's fine. We get yeah. you get a, a weighted opinion there, and a, yeah. a better overall scope. Yeah. Of music centric movies. So. There we go. Uh, well, my number one, I'm gonna go, and I was really torn on this. I, mm-hmm. I, I there, there's two that were kind of like I was toying with the idea, and so I just left the other one completely off the list. Yeah, um, I'm gonna go with Saturday Night Fever. Ah, I'm gonna. Go, I didn't even think of that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go with that as the the number one music related movie of all time. Oh, that thing was a big deal when it came out. Yes, it was. Yeah, and yes, it, it really was. propelled disco into the mainstream. And, and a great soundtrack. It was a great soundtrack. I mean, those, those BG songs are, are awesome. Yeah. Say they, what you want about disco, they're great songs. They really are. And those yeah. guys could write. They could sing. They could... Mm-hmm. Everything about them were just amazing, really, for yeah. in the context of popular music. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I love a lot of the songs on that soundtrack to yeah. this day. I like and, uh, Disco Inferno. It's <clears> one of my favorites off of there. Yeah. Now, not making our list, because they're not necessarily within our rules of uh, music-centric movies, Yeah. but you cannot talk about music and movies, especially in the 80s, and not talk about John Hughes. Oh, wow. We're talking The Breakfast Club, Pretty in Pink, if all you of those stay, movies. That's the first thing that just started playing in my head automatically as soon yeah, as you said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, his use of music, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, another <laughs> one. Um, John Hughes... Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. ...would not hire a... Yeah. He would, he would not hire a music supervisor who was the person who would help select music yeah. and get the licensing. He would do it all himself. Brilliant. Because he had a vision for the music in the movie, and he he, he was hands-on. Right. He did it by himself. So all of those songs that were popular in the 80s because of the John Hughes movies was because of John Hughes. Yeah. He would not let anybody else do that. And, you know, in a similar way, even though it didn't have quite the impact, this is a different era. Mm-hmm. The guy who does the, uh, help me with the name here, uh, Quentin Tarantino. Yes. Uh, oh, Yes, great, great mm-hmm. use of music in his movies. And, Absolutely, and, and he yeah. usually picks the music that they used as well. So yes, I yeah. think maybe that was an inspiration from Mr. Hughes, who unfortunately we seems like as we get older and we do more of these episodes, you're going to have this. Of course, Mr. Hughes died a couple of years ago he or did. a year ago or something. Yeah, uh, so so sad because I, I was a huge fan. I, I can't me think too. of a John Hughes. It would be hard for me to pick my least favorite John Hughes movie. Movie, right? Yeah, me too. It's so good. Yeah. So good. I want to also hit on um, a couple of honorable mentions, uh, movies that were uh, huge in the same way of the others that we mentioned that didn't make the list. Flashdance. Mm. I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Can you think of that movie without thinking about the music and the soundtrack and so forth? Not at all, yeah. Uh, Xanadu. I think it's a pretty terrible movie, honestly, but yeah. you had uh, Olivia Newton-John starring in the movie mm-hmm. and also... Um, electric uh, light orchestra music as well. Yep. Uh, very cool. Breaking, the breakdance movie from the 80s. Remember that oh, one? Oh, God. I almost forgot about that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Rhinestone, uh, Sly Stone, and wow. uh, Dolly Parton. Remember yeah, that? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Norwood, that's a movie, uh, awful movie. I hate to say that. It pains me to say that because I love Glenn Campbell. Yeah. Uh, but it was a, a movie based around music. Another honorable mention I wanted to bring up was Pump Up the Volume, starring uh, Christian Slater. Wonderful movie. Yeah. Yeah. In that one, the music wasn't so much a part, you know, a big contributor to the plot, but it was definitely important. So right. it's worth mentioning here. Now, was that 88 or 89? That was 89, I believe. Yeah. 89, yeah. Mm-hmm. Great soundtrack, too. It was a fantastic soundtrack, yeah. <laughs> Love it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess if we're talking honorable mentions, one that we left off the list, neither one of us talked about, was Footloose. Yeah. I mean, yeah. come on. In the 80s, that's probably one of the most important or quintessential you know, movies that had music as a main plot theme. Yeah, that's true. Now, it was more about, you know, dancing and this yeah. town having band dancing. L- less about the music, but you can't have the dancing without the music. So exactly. I think, yeah, definitely worth mentioning. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, there's a, there's a few honorable mentions here. I mentioned Superfly, Curtis Mayfield, The mm-hmm. Wiz. Uh, so, yeah. So, throughout the years, as you can see, there have been many attempts, not always successful ones, but a lot of successful ones, yeah. of trying to marry uh, pop stars with the big screen. Yep. And uh, these are a few of our favorites. Uh, feel free to drop us a line, your favorite list. You know, let us yeah, know what let we left. Yeah. I'm sure there's some big ones that we left out. And, and I really didn't want to, to go and look on the internet and find all these lists. I really wanted to do it from my own personal. Exactly right. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, I didn't want to be swayed by anything. Yeah. So, all, all right. right. Cool. Thanks for watching this episode of In a Darkened Room. You can find the link to this episode's companion Spotify playlist in the description. Darren and Chris welcome your comments. You can leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. Follow In a Darkened Room on Twitter to receive updates and submit your ideas for what we should discuss in upcoming episodes. Darren and Chris are also on Instagram, so give them a follow there as well. All of these links can be found in the description below. While you're there, be sure to click subscribe and ring the bell. All right, random topic time, and I uh, think we should test our knowledge with the old trivia box. What do you say? Let's see what we got. All right, uh, you draw it this time. All right. Category is the 90s. The 90s, all, all right. right. Uh, what was the name of the Spin Doctor's first hit album? And I think hit is the uh, main thing here, because they had an album before they had a hit album. Right. Uh, so we've got uh, Spin Cycle. <laughs> <laughs> um, the doctors are in uh, rookie attempt. Well, these are just lousy choices. They're awful. So we know. So that it's going to be D. Yeah. Pocket full of kryptonite. Pocket full of kryptonite. And yeah. I, I love that Jimmy Olsen's blue song. I do too, man. Um, and I remember. I think you were the first person to tell me about Spin Doctors. Yeah, I remember hearing them on Lightning One Hundred. Yeah, locally. Little Miss can't be wrong or something. Uh, was yeah, that no, the they're one? actually playing Jimmy Olsen's blues okay. first. Yeah. Uh, before those songs were released as yeah. singles. Yeah. So yeah, I bought the CD before anybody else had heard of it, unless you were a Lightning One Hundred listener, of course. You know. It, it's funny when I first heard Third Eye Blind, Semi Charm Life, I thought it sounded like a Spin Doctor song. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Yeah, yeah. I never thought of that, but I can see it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I like the Spin Doctors overall. I thought they were pretty cool. Yeah, they got worn out. You know, eventually yeah. it's like okay, enough with the Spin Doctors because you just heard them all the time. Yeah, the Two radio. Princess song I think is the one that really done them in. I mean, yeah. this got yeah. played to death, but I did like it. I thought it was mm-hmm. performed well and good pop songs that crossed over into yeah. the alternative a little bit. And, Absolutely, and yeah. there's some other great songs on that album. Sure. Like 40 or 50. Yeah. Oh, that's a great song. That is a great yeah. song. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us for this one. Absolutely. We'll be back again with a new episode soon. Take care. Keep rocking.